First thing that completely surprised me was that the video is only four minutes long. You know, I have amazing script, four pages, you know, everything in detail, dialogues and everything. And I thought like it would be like at least seven minutes, 10 minutes. No, it's about four. So yeah, great experience. I know that next time I need to write something a little longer. Hi, my name is Charlie and I'm a running archer. And in this video, we will see behind the scenes with my commentary, my director commentary, let's say, of how I made it. So let's dive right into this. And the first thing is how it went on the set. Good morning. Right behind me is Piaristic Monastery. And today we will, at this super historical place, make my first short archery movie from long series, I believe long series, because I believe you will like it. So uh, my car is fully packed with equipment, of course, food, targets, bows, arrows, many, many things. So I'm just waiting for my friend to help me and uh, let's do the stuff, you know, make amazing film. Well, here we are. We are inside of the monastery, uh, targets, stuff, lights, bows right there. And this is the space where we will make the thing. So I'm super curious how it's gonna be like because I believe it looks stunning. It's an amazing place. Like I will definitely jump from right this platform. Uh, for example, in this exact room, in this exact room, and that's truth, studied Johann Gregor Mendel for two years or something like this. So in this space he lived and right now we are about to do some running archery stuff in here. Every movie like this needs a proper script. So uh, it's like three page script with all the things. It's in Czech language, so you probably will not understand, but uh, the things we will say, me and the character stream uh, are there in English. So you will understand that it looks like this. And well, lots of work to do now. You might be wondering, uh, how I made the effect that uh, the projection of selection of my bows is glowing into my face. I use this small light and Alej is recording me from very close. So that's it, you know, smart moves. We're something like in a half of the whole movie. And right now we need to um, record the scenes from the camera, not from the GoPro because it's done already, uh, how I do the second round. I will fail, uh, it, I will not be fast enough, but it's gonna be uh, almost very close. And right now we will make shot by shot of me running through the doors, shooting and whatever. So yeah, it's pretty hard, but so much joy. I can imagine that this is my, you know, this is how I, how I make my living, you know? I believe if I have like 500,000 subscribers, I can do this full time and you will see many more movies like this. And believe me, I have so many plans, so many. All the recording is done. I'm sitting on the things. I'm waiting for my wife and son to pick me up. And there was not that many BDSs because we had lots to do and not that much time. So it was work and work and work and shooting and jumping and shooting and so on. So it was, it was dramatic, but I believe we have everything we needed from this beautiful monastery. And I can go to studio, download all the things, all the footage and start to putting it all together. So whew, lots of work ahead. And also, Let's have a short look how it went when I was editing that movie. What I do right now is that I'm editing all the video, all the footage, everything that is in that long script. And uh, right now I work on it for about an hour and I have half finished about 20 seconds. Uh, so you can imagine how demanding is it to really edit, I believe nicely edit and very deeply edit a movie. It's not like normal YouTube video, which is just cut, 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 you know, some adjustments and that's it. This is much more harder thing to do, but you know what? I enjoy it so much. So let me work and you saw the result. So you probably saw that like that, I believe. Next was a very important part, which is 
uh, make my voice sound amazing because I only use the referencing microphone so it just you know catches sounds from the environment and my voice was uh, very often sounding like from very very far distance and the echo of the monastery was huge so everything I said I used this microphone to replicate and do it with super high quality sound so you understand every single word and it has the most amazing quality as possible also maybe you're curious who is stream I mean who did voice of a stream? Uh, I use software called Speechello. I use it for my audiobooks in English and so on. And it's pretty, I would say, smart system uh, to transfer text into uh, spoken words. So I found, uh, I believe it was uh, British English. Her name was like Beatrix and I used her. Then I add some echo. So uh, I, I, I made it sound like she's talking from above, like somewhere in the dream. Also, I believe that you mentioned that in this movie, there are only three colors most of the time. It's white because of the walls. So let's say white, gray, something like this, shades of gray. Not at the book, just shades of gray. Uh, then we have something like black uh, because of my trousers, uh, my glove and some, uh, let's say, darker parts of scenes, like something in the shade. And then dominant color is red because I have red shoes, super uncomfortable shoes, but you know, for you, I would do whatever. Uh, then red hoodie, red bow and red arrows. And also I have my pink, uh, I don't have it right here. I have uh, pink tapes for my fingers. I couldn't manage to buy red. I didn't have the time for it. So uh, the pink has to be good enough. Why I did this? Because there is a rule in cinematography. It's called 60 to 30 to 10 rule. It means that uh, colors in the scene should be like three colors most of the time and 60% should be one color which in our case is let's say the white gray something uh, then 30% other color should be in our case the black like the trousers and the darker parts and the 10% which is maybe more than 10% is the red color which pops you know from these black and white so it pops and I believe uh, it works pretty well that you know you are really attracted into my movement arrows bow whatever is happening because whatever I do is red and also I needed to do color grading because I used uh, vlog in my camera. It means that it needs to be color graded. It's great setup in my camera that allows me to have beautiful dynamic range. So it means that from super bright parts to super dark parts, the camera is able to record everything. And then I, in post-production, I can choose what suits me best, what I want. In this case, I put everything down. I want it much darker. So in my case, I choose to pop up the reds, absolutely push down the highlights. So it's much more mid tones and uh, lower tones, low, low, low lighting. So, so there's n not that much light. So it's much more dramatic and it's little blue because I changed the white balance to little lower numbers, which means that it's like colder. It feels colder. So it's like cold dream in a abandoned monastery and just the red clothed archer shooting at the targets. Every single shot I have to color grade separately and make it uh, synchronized with all other shots, everything manually. There's no system to make it super good, super, super, super nice. Then do every single shot in a hand, you know, by my hands. Another thing I want to implement was this game look. I know I'm not super good designer, so my stamina and health bar and time and uh, how many arrows I still have doesn't look super amazing, but I believe that it gives you the idea, the imagination of that it's like a game because stream at the beginning of the story says it's a game. Welcome to the game. So I want to implement this game style because I like computer games. Uh, I played many of them. So I want to implement this a little more. And my, th my idea was to show you that my stamina, so I mean the energy I have for, for the certain run is 
is still going down. I believe you mentioned that, that it's going down. Uh, the bar is still, you know, going down. And then I wanted to show you the time. So I want you to still see that how much time still I have from this 20 second limit to finish my goal. So you can see that the first, the second and the third round I'm still improving myself, I'm still going faster and, and it's better. So you see that while I shoot at certain target, the time is a little better, a little better until I'm able to finish all the running in time. Another very important part is that there is no CGI. All arrows, everything is real, 100%. There is no edit like this. Everything is just by my hands, bow and arrows, that's it. And because many people don't believe that is it possible like run like this in the building and shoot at a target and hit them all, uh, I would like to share with you and show you unedited all run, the third run I succeeded uh, on and uh, you can see that there are no effects, there is nothing, it's just GoPro on my head and I did all the stuff, it's super possible, there is nothing you will not be able to do too, so enjoy. Also, there was a huge idea of how to make the selection of the bows. I wanted to make it much more interactive and, and, and better looking, but the problem is that my skills in editing and how I imagined that and how I want it to be uh, doesn't match with what I'm able to do. So I know it's not the best possible part of the whole movie, that's why I a little uh, cut it down. And there were a little more words about which bow I should choose and why and, and I commented it, you know, it's in the screenplay, let me tell you, because uh, it was like, uh, I was asking, and where is my bow, you know, with love, like, I'm a game, in an archery game and I have no bow, and a stream uh, says, uh, choose, your, choose one from your collection, it's in there. But then uh, there were many more shots, how I look uh, at the table, uh, at a floating table, floating display, let's say, and I'm choosing the bow and I'm thinking like, um, uh, I'm inside a building, I want something short, uh, Turkish bow. And then she says, be more specific because I have many Turkish bows in my collection. And then I choose from many of just Turkish bows, the one, and I will choose the red one because it's the shortest Turkish bow I have, so it's pretty amazing for clearing the building. But because I found that I'm not able to do this edit quick and looking good, so I just skip through these steps and I just choose the bow and, uh, and start running. Interesting, I believe, is that there are in this only four minutes like eight or nine music tracks. Nine different types of music. Every single run has different music, uh, you know, the first one is like a li little quirky, little like like fun, like uh, I'm not sure what I do. The second round is, you know, much, much, much stronger, much more self-esteemed. And the third is just pure rock ride, something strong, something super, super self-conscious, uh, super uh, self-esteemed. So I believe that it helps to understand the music, how it supports all the different runs. Be between when I talk uh, with stream, there are a little different music, so I, I wanted to uh, go into little, uh, let's say, deeper emotions, like I imagine that maybe I'll fail, maybe I will not be that good and I as I planned, and maybe I will not be that good to uh, listen to the offer from stream. So I'm thinking about it. And there's a scene with the heartbeats, and the heartbeats, if you once again we'll uh, see the video are normal like doo -doo, doo -doo. then it speeds up doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. and before I run there is longer pause and the last heartbeat starts the music so it's like doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. I calm down before run 
and then and music starts playing so it was it was the idea of i feel the tension i feel that i really want to be super good i really want to hear the offer she has for me and i realize also that i need to be super calm i need to be super clear super fine and super ready to do the stuff properly normally in the movies i would spend so much time with noises on the background with all the steps and jumps and uh, when the arrow hits the target but because i recorded all sounds uh, at both of my cameras and my gopro and my head or uh, to my camera i'm recording right now uh, i used a pretty good microphone so both cameras were recording the sound of what i do so i just used the sound from the cameras and it makes all the surrounding sounding effects and i believe it works pretty well because it's exactly every single step every single hit of a target and and, and everything is in here so it saved me tons of time of doing all these vfx also at the beginning and at the end are sleeping scenes where i'm in a bed with my super beautiful pajamas with mickey mouse and uh, i want to show you how i recorded this I want to show you how the scene of me falling asleep uh, looks like. You know, this is our uh, bedroom. Here's a tripod. There was a camera and pointing at me with my beautiful pajamas. I just wanted to make it a little funnier. And uh, I'm laying like this. I just turn it off uh, the light and it's like, it's like completely dark. So very easy setup. And then the other part, uh, is made that there is a window in my son's uh, bedroom and the light comes in so uh, because I have super good camera uh, it was good enough light to uh, make this like midnight uh, sleeping uh, bedroom scene so that was it it was pretty fun I've never been uh, filming myself how I pretend to sleep. Well, my friends, I hope I covered everything I wanted to share with you. I just think if it really was everything I wanted to tell you. If you have questions and if you are curious of how I did something or you want to explain something, just use comment section down below and let's talk about everything. I'm super open to share you my, with you my secrets. Hit the like button. It helps my channel to grow so much. Thank you. Uh, comment you know we talked about it just if you have questions or if you want to say share something just use the comments down below hit the subscribe button if you aren't already and i'm looking forward to meeting you next time until then i would say keep on running but right now i would rather not run in this studio